Rich Kumar is the editor of Resurgence, an ecological magazine at the sandal-wearing end of the Green Movement, and he counts amongst his many fans Prince Charles and the Dalai Lama. I represent the entire history of evolution. I was present in the beginning, the first Big Bang, and I'll be here for billions of years to come. But isn't Satish's spirituality just about imposing yet another superstitious false positive? The world is made of two elements. One element is visible element. The other aspect of creation is invisible dimension, things we cannot see. So, so what is that element which is invisible? I call it spiritual. When you go in a room, you say, there is a good feeling here. There's a spirit of ah, the room. Well, now you've changed to something rather different. The, the spirit is a very big and very holistic and very inclusive word. It is not defined in a one particular way. So when you go in a room, you can say, the tree has a spirit. A, a rock has a spirit. It's a living rock for me. Nature without spirit cannot exist. Like a tree cannot exist without the sunlight, it cannot exist without rain, it cannot exist without soil. Also, it cannot exist without the tree-ness. The tree-ness is the spiritual quality. Or, uh, or the rock-ness. Or the rock-ness. When you talk about the rock-ness or the quality of a rock, uh, I can see as a scientist a rock has hardness and things like that, but I think that's not quite what you mean. Um, it sounds as though what you do mean is something imposed by the human observer. A rock is, 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 but, is but atoms. But there is a rock quality in the rock. Well, you, th that's a matter of assertion. I mean, you, you are now simply asserting that. Asserting, I'm understanding it. This is my yeah. understanding. Okay. Some may understand more fully than others, but it is not imposed. It is there. It all sounds very poetic, but it's not reality. Like priests, mullahs and rabbis, New Age mystics ceaselessly attempt to fill gaps in human understanding with fabricated meaning. Science and rationality are often accused of having a cold, bleak outlook. But why is it bleak to face up to the evidence of what we know? The word mundane has come to mean boring and dull. And it really shouldn't, it should mean the opposite, because it comes from the Latin mundus, meaning the world, and the world is anything but dull. The world is wonderful. There's real poetry in the real world. Science is the poetry of reality. And yet today, science is under attack. In the last 50 years, science has put a man on the moon, cloned a sheep, decoded the human genome. And yet, sadly, the white heat of the 1960s seems to be treated as a white elephant today. What colour do you see, guys? In the thing, it looks most okay. okay. It's, it's blue, yellow, and blue. That's it. It's that... A prejudice against science is evident in schools. Physics A-levels have halved in the last 25 years, chemistry fallen by more than a third. University departments are closing all around the country. This is a betrayal of the Enlightenment. The fundamental problem, I think, lies with the fashion throughout our educational system to teach students to value private feeling more highly than evidence-based reason. This is rooted in the postmodern relativist agenda. For relativists, scientific truth is just a patriarchal Western orthodoxy that, like the old Roman Catholic Church, stands in the way of other equally valid outlooks on the world. 
with things like the paranormal, the drive for alternative medicine, all these kinds of movements away from the orthodoxy in science, I see it a lot as like the Protestant Reformation was vis-a-vis -vis Roman Catholicism. Internet, in a way, is kind of functioning as a kind of information source, very much like the printing press did in the 15th century and 16th century, that is in a sense empowering people to sort of look up stuff for themselves in terms of different kinds of treatments and things like that, and, and in a way not trusting the experts anymore. And well, look, why do I have to trust, you know, the GP? Why do I have to trust the Royal Society? I think you're so close to being right, but yet you're <laughs> down wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Um, I would like to take that ball and run with it in a different direction. Yes, we want to question authority. We don't want to say, because this person is the president of the Royal Society, therefore what he says is right. We've got to go back to the evidence and find out what is actually true. The problem is, of course, people may look at the same evidence and then reach a somewhat different conclusion from what the head of the Royal Society reached. And so they will say, well, look, you know, I looked at the evidence too and I'm not persuaded by this. That's where you start getting a kind of an opening up uh, of science. Steve Fuller is, of course, right that the Internet is revolutionizing how we use and consume information. But the impersonal algorithms of Internet search engines do not weed out robust evidence from unsourced, uncorroborated assertion. Wikipedia World presents both great opportunity and huge danger. Paranoid conspiracy theories circulate unchallenged. Sometimes they're relatively harmless, like the rumor that NASA faked the moon landings, which is a bit of a joke because the evidence for going to the moon is so strong. But how about the malicious and utterly unfounded rumor that 4,000 Jews were tipped off by Israeli agents not to go to work in the World Trade Center on 9-11? It's one of the nasty lies circulating as truth in the blog community of racists and religious fundamentalists. Now such people can find each other anywhere in the world instantly, whipping up scares and reinforcing their paranoia and delusions. As evidence is devalued, even medical progress has become a target. Her lungs had gone into spasms, she was vomiting. Hundreds of families blame the MMR vaccines for autism, brain damage and meningitis. When one report, now widely discredited, wrongly linked MMR vaccine with autism, an innuendo circulated that the establishment was conspiring to risk our children's health. It led to hundreds of thousands of parents failing to protect their offspring from the threat of measles, a serious disease that, in Afghanistan, kills 35,000 people a year. This is the world of private hunches and no respect for evidence. Reason has built the modern world. It is a precious but also a fragile thing, which can be corroded by apparently harmless irrationality. We must favor verifiable evidence over private feeling. Otherwise, we leave ourselves vulnerable to those who would obscure the truth.